Is that the diagnostics team? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, from diagnostics. Hi, Marathia, I'm from diagnostic background. Hi, nice to meet you. Hey, Justin, uh, we know from AV Mark. What's that? Uh, we know from AV Mark. Uh-uh. Yeah, he's from AV Mark uh, project. This. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. All right. So do we have everybody available or should we wait for some more people? Uh, from our side, uh, is that? Uh, they, they will be joining. Uh, so we have a few folks joining from Wet Street as well. Uh, I can see Meher in the call. Hey, Meher, you there? All right. Hey, Subhash, yes. I have asked my team also to join. Just give me a minute. Sure, we can wait. Yeah, I can see Ratna uh, is waiting. Yeah, we can do. So Justin, give us a minute. Probably we can get started. You got it, buddy. Hey Rakesh, uh, is Ratna is with me or? Okay. Hey Ratna, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good started. Yeah, uh, this we are good to go. Okay, great. Well, today is the uh, meeting for basic test creation working inside the QA automation framework. Kind of going over detail how authorization works with the EVET application, uh, how we manage the cookies uh, to pass on authorization throughout the application to communicate with various web services. How do we report back results? How do we run these tests? Um, and then any general questions you guys have. Uh, I'll go through um, one by one pretty slowly on how we go and in terms of an approach of testing the application through the web service. I'll take questions uh, as we go along. Um, if I go too fast, just yell at me because I tend to speak really fast. I don't know why I do that. <laughs> um, um, and at the end of the uh, meeting, uh, I guess we can do a couple of exercises if you guys want um, or answer any questions that you may have. Oh, we got somebody in the lobby. Sure. Added. There we go. <clears throat> I pasted in the chat a um, document that Caleb has been working on. Uh, it lays out the web service testing, um, kind of like a template moving forward when you interact with either the JSON or web forms, uh, how we post commands and how we parse the responses. And be more you guys are more than happy to go over it now, um, but it's kind of an extensive document, it's like 11 or 12 pages. Um, but if you have questions on that, let me know. And uh, Caleb and I will always be here throughout the week, of course. I'll start sharing my screen. We'll get this show started. All right, first thing uh, we do in terms of um, Testing Eva is we use an application called Fiddler. Have you guys already downloaded this? If you haven't downloaded it, I recommend you go ahead and download this tool. It's kind of how we um, look at the back end, or not even the back end, but kind of reverse engineer calls made from the web browser uh, to the web service. So it's a critical tool that I use uh, in order to set it up. Um, I like to use a filter because otherwise you get a bunch of communication um, and messages that I don't have any interest in whatsoever. So I put it on a filter. I say use filters, 
show only if URL contains, and then I work with you at practice. So that name is always in the URL, regardless of what environment I'm testing against. So that way it just shows me um, Evet calls rather than you know my Outlook or my Teams or anything like that. Once you have it set up, make sure you just turn on use filters and start with a clean slate. Um, I'll log out of the application. So you guys can get an idea of what we're dealing with in terms of authentication. Now, Evet, there's a couple ways to log into Evet. There's the client, there's the practice, and the administration. I'll go through both because each one's a little bit different. Just by, before we even log in, you have to realize that EVET is passing a request verification token before uh, we even type anything in. As soon as we hit this site, it uh, puts one inside the HTML hidden, and we need to capture that. So, but I didn't know that until like last week. <laughs> um, but I have flushed out the administration portion pretty extensively now. Um, I think I've caught all the little hidden Easter eggs, if you will. So I'll refresh it, show you what it sends. So here is Evet when we first hit the page. That's the web form. I go to uh, raw. Uh, we didn't actually send anything. This is my my post, or actually my Git, and this is the response. Um, it just hits the page. Obviously, there's no JSON or anything that it's sent over. It returns this list. One, one thing that we are looking for is the request verification, which is here. It, it contains a key right here. And so I need this long thing. I need to send it when I send any sort of response. Uh, when I log in, I need to send that, which will generate um, another key that goes into my cookie container. How the framework handles that, everything is handled in base controllers in here. So this is an old way of doing it. I'm going to delete it where I would capture the token. I'd hard code it. The new way of doing that is down here. <laughs> Capture request token. Um, what I do is I use HTML agility node to look for the uh, request verification token and I parse out my string. Uh, I can go ahead and run it if you want, um, but all I'm doing is capturing this and then sending it when I log in. Now let me log into the page. I'll delete all the CSS files and things that I don't need. I still have this. And then as you can see, we've sent that same request token in our request body. And then we set a bunch of cookies when that happens. So we create that. We have to grab the cookies, put them in here. And that gives us to this page. Now, you can go to certain areas of the application and everything will be fine, except when you actually go to create like a client or an employee or an inventory item or anything like that. It'll always throw an authentication error. That error is due to the fact that uh, when we open up a practice, we have to set a bunch of other cookies and generate another request authentication token. So if I were to click on, say, SmartFlow, there is a redirect to practice call that uh, I was originally skipping, but I had to learn that I actually had to capture all these cookies. Uh, and these are the cookies that you would get if you authenticated just as a practice rather than an administrator. So I was bypassing that step by going through administration, um, and that's how I had missed it. But I need to set all these cookies in my cookie header. And the framework handles that as well. Um, let me take a step back. Um, and it's specific to the practice. So it's obviously looking at practice ID 60. 
gather the practice IDs on this column here. Um, and you need to assign that before you do any authentication. It, as an example, uh, if I look at create employee, I have made a column that says, or a, a method that says select a practice. This is a private uh, method that's inside my test case, which should be up here, select practice. And all it's doing is calling, is resetting my auth cookie. Uh, and then I call the practice here. It's in my uh, practices controller. And I think we got, yeah, practices controller. Redirect to practice. <clears throat> which is just parsing out the cookies uh, from this call right here. Uh, the cookies are also a uh, little malformed. Uh, so .NET didn't like it, so I had to build a uh, cookie parser, which is here on the common uh, tools that I build. Uh, that these are hopefully uh, actions that you'll be able to use over and over and over again. So you have to reinvent the wheel anytime you want to do something like parse out your cookies. This will handle it for you. Here's my cookie parser. It's looking for uh, a couple of things that I need. Um, when the cookie expires, the value uh, property. Question? Sorry. Okay, so I'll go back. So long story short, uh, I have to capture all these and then I actually get into the home screen and we have authenticated both as an admin and as a practice and I've got all the cookies relevant to that specific practice. So before I create my test, and I do anything in this is the case. I'm just creating a employee. I got to say, hey, I'm under this practice. Um, these are my credentials, save it, and then I can throw in the values that I want when I actually go to call the great employee uh, API call. Any questions thus far? OK. I will uh, run the test. You'll see that it, we're doing the same exact thing. It's going to log in as an administrator. First, it's going to go to the administration page. It's going to grab the cookie or the uh, request verification token, and then it's going to log in again, passing it in um, from its get out of this view from the uh, eh, HTML header, HTML body, looking for that specific request string. Yeah, verification token. Um, we take that request verification token, I pass it here, and then finally I'm at the uh, practice screen, practice management screen, so it's the same exact concept. Here we are logging in, here we finally uh, get to this part, and then I say call this, redirect to practice. Notice my cookies are, are gonna change uh, from that to that, so I added the particular value that I need, which is just the E set, E value set, Ah, the E set value, which is the hash version of your username, your password, and the request verification token. And then I go to uh, creating a uh, employee. In this case, this is not JSON, it's a web form. And what I mean by a web form is all this information needs to be filled out. So that's what you're seeing here is me kind of trying to get the create employee uh, to work. Um, obviously the test won't look like that when we're done. I was just trying to pass all the relevant information that I need uh, for the web service to accept it and create an employee. <clears throat> it's not working, and I'll show you here in a minute, but we're gonna fix it uh, by the end of today's practice. So I'm pass all this information, um, and then of course I get an error. Uh, it shows me as a uh, result 200, so that's why we don't look at the result code because a lot of times the web service from EVET will just say everything's good and hunky-dory, but really an error has occurred and um, it doesn't tell me why. Uh, you'll generally get a, a problem has occurred web view here. Sometimes you don't. So you kind of have to look at what uh, returns back. In this case, it just reloads the page and it's not happy because it didn't actually create an employee. So that was one of the problems that I was running into last week. Any questions? Uh, Justin, I have one question. So for third party integrations like lab or any payment gateway, how we handle the errors that we, if we have anything in in the in case we are 
trying to talk to those uh, third party softwares and if there is any error while connecting to them. Uh, Great question. We... Yeah. So like third party uh, integrations that we have, there is a, I had just finished doing the um, vet rocket integration. There is a test. You guys are more than welcome to look at any of the tests under the tests in the EVET pro, uh, practice project. Uh, there is a vet rocket test. Uh, it's doing the same exact thing in terms of setting up my test. You have your configuration file. It loads here, which is vet rocket. Any variables that I want. It's a functionality API test, right? Um, and in terms of VetRocket, I need a modality selection, which has to do with the images that we send over and then return back. Um, then we have our select practice once again, where I just redirect the practice. I re-update my auth cookie because I log in as administrator first, same exact thing. And we call the web service uh, in the uh, create procedure because that's where um, the interaction first starts. I believe it's, if I go here, do, 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 show you really fast. Features, beautiful. Do, 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 do. And then I have my vet rocket. This is my modality um, form here. I, I save it. If I look, uh, save item. I'm saving um, imaging modality, and then I wait for the return response, which is JSON. Uh, lets me know if it was true. It gives me an ID of that uh, procedure item, and then the HTML that draws the actual form here, which I can parse with HTML parser. Now there is a section to answer your question. Now that uh, they've got another section of the Vet Rocket programming done. Um, that deals with actually going outside the EVET application. I'll show you that. Because uh, I was testing it yesterday. <clears throat> but it's not exactly working. So I have an imaging study here. Uh, re kill all this. I haven't created it yet. This is actually make calling uh, outside. Evet going to the actual vet rocket website. Uh, I have my filter on, so that's unhelpful. Turn that off. We need to see it. And I actually haven't done this part yet. We haven't automated it yet, so that's kind of a great question. <laughs> I'm doing everything inside. So what do we got? We got grabbing image view imaging study. So I'm looking at the URL here. Uh, I guess there's an ID of uh, 325 in my URL. That's going to activate this image that doesn't exist on that side because I don't know how to use it yet. Um, so it looks like I'd make this call to do a git. I'd re it's going to return. Let's see, there's Quattro. That's a uh, the tunnel, anything that's in gray is a tunnel, so I'm not interested in those. There we go. So here's the return that I'm getting. I can click on a web view to see. Nothing there. Not really helpful. See web access. So their API returned that. So I should be able to look for. Um, this. So let me see what this looks like. Yep, so that's what they're calling. Yep. What I would do is I would create, I'd look at it first, and how would I reverse engineer this? So the user ID EVET practice, that's easy enough to send credentials and security ID, and it looks like it's hashed of some sort. I take a step back and see where we're getting that that maybe that, that they hash it or do we hash it and if we hash it then we have to reverse engineer that way so let's see credentials verification blah 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 that's us 
that's not going to be helpful. Nope, it's not there. So maybe it's in the settings uh, in Evet. There's we have settings for that practice where we configure it. Maybe that hash gets generated when I save the settings. So that's what I mean by you just have to reverse engineer where it's all coming from. Smart flow. Dun, 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 dun. That rocket. Yeah, let me kill this. Oh. Save. Um, of course, it's a web form. Those are always fun. Um, we hash it here. No, nope, we're just passing the standard credentials in. Our return might give it to us, though. Nope, this one's just setting up all our cookies. So that's a great question. I want to know how to do it in Vet Rocket. You can see the concept of trying to figure out how do I reliably automate the portion of making this call to the document that I need. We know it's document 325. Um, looks like EVET and then 325 is this accession number. I guess that's how Vet Rocket associates an image with the study. User ID, EVET practice, that's simple enough. Security ID, not quite sure how we're going to do that yet but I haven't went that far in terms of integrating. Did that in answer your question? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, okay. Yeah, mainly looking for uh, the third party integration, how we are handling that, but definitely we'll look into that uh, more once we explore this. Right, so I, I, if I was gonna test the functionality of Vet Rocket, I wouldn't call Quattro's website. I would probably just call, um, when I actually click on a procedure and I say, hey, give me the imaging study, that's what I would stop my test, but that's just me. Okay. So, because I, I don't need to know if Web Quattro's website works. I don't care about Web Quattro's. I care about, are we making the uh, call from our page to theirs? That's what I'd be more concerned about, but that's, just, you know, that's me. It depends on your guys' test cases. Uh, but let's see, imaging studies. If I was going to validate that the integration was setting up as like a functionality test, I'd hit that. I'd say view imaging study. Uh, see what we send it. We just send this URL to Git. And I would probably just get the response. Uh, uh, da -da 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 -da. View medical record. Git. And then I, yeah, I'd be trying to look for certain messages. Now it said error occurred in operation, no studies that match that criteria. I think that would be a legitimate test that would say, yes, it's actually integrated. I just don't have an image associated with this study because I don't know what I'm doing with that rocket. <laughs> I don't know how to get an imaging study to work, but it's a new feature they put in yesterday. So that's, that's a fair defense for me. I don't know how they got this integrated. Sure. So that's just how I would do it. Any other questions? Even on call, if you, you guys have any questions. Yeah. Okay, moving on. So we were talking about um, auth authorization. We just covered authorization. Um, I guess let's say we wanted to create a test. Um, there's a lot of areas of EVET that I haven't even touched yet. Uh, we were kind of doing smoke tests and smoke tests um, as you know are basically functionality tests to make sure something is working we're not trying to break it we're not trying to do anything special um uh, whiteboard is one of my next ones i wanted to hit on so let's dive in i don't have anything in uh evet project that talks about whiteboards there's nothing i don't have a model i don't have a controller I don't have any. I don't even have a placeholder in my smoke tests of, hey, I want to create a client or whatever. So I just start from scratch. Now my authorization stuff. When you guys do the authorization in Evet, it's all taken care of. It's already been written out. Um, I do that here at the beginning of my test and setup. Uh, it's in my configuration. So I load the credentials, username, and password, uh, 
And then I set my authorization cookies, which calls my authorized admin evet cookies. I say admin because I'm logging in as administrator, but if you're not logging in as administrator, there's another one uh, you can call. If I wanted to set my auth cookie and I'd say authorize, we have the authorized user. That's what it was called, which is just logging in as a practice. Uh, some of these are deprecated, um, like Evet cookies. Uh, that's going to go away today. Admin portal initial cookies going to go away today. These are public methods. They really should be private, so I'll get rid of those. I send in my, the domain that I'm going through, which is set in my smoke test configuration file. This is uh, important that you do it in a JSON configuration file because DevOps Azure is going to be writing different um, var variables here when it actually gets kicked off in our continuous integration in terms of the smoke test. When you guys aren't doing smoke tests, you're doing functionality tests, you want to kick them off manually. I don't care what you guys do, um, but if it's going to be integrated, the test itself is going to be integrated in any way with something with continuous integration, build pipelines, release pipelines, all that jazz, make sure it's in a JSON file, set your variables in here because then we can set them inside of DevOps. Uh, and then we can run it every time a build executes and we have the proper credentials for your test. Okay, so we don't have anything set up in terms of what we're gonna do uh, with the whiteboard. So let's go ahead and create a method, I guess you could say. Before I even do that, I need to get a model and a controller built. I've got to see what I'm actually calling. Let's add an item. What are we doing here? We add an item calls create whiteboard zero. Awesome. It doesn't provide me with anything. I don't have to worry about my cookies. So I can actually skip this step. I don't need to load the page in my API functionality test. So I don't care about any of that. This looks irrelevant. Um, don't care about CSS files, what the HTML is doing. Don't care about any of that. So all that is irrelevant. Um, I need to search for a patient. There's one I created called Charlie. So there's Charlie. What does that do? Search. Oh, okay. So here we're looking for, um, well, it starts right away, char. So it looks for char and that's pretty much it. I don't have a client ID to worry about. So I'm just gonna do this post JSON and I'm returning items. So it looks like Charlie canine. Da, 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 da. Perfect. So because I don't have a model, let's create a model. This is under page, uh, the practices whiteboard. So I go under practice models. Don't have one here. Go ahead and create a new one. Justin, so sorry to interfere in between this Ravi. Uh, so, so the tests we are writing right now, it's mostly towards uh, or against, I would say, the the APIs which are which are testable. Like, uh, it's not the U uh, URLs which are returning you some HTML, All right? Right. Okay. So you're testing what's returnable from your API, right? Yeah, you, maybe some kind of API through the controllers and all. So you're testing those uh, those ones, not the ones which are returning the HTML. Uh, right. So in this case, I, I skipped the one that was returning HTML. Didn't care about that. I was just sending this JSON. I wanted to serialize the JSON and return to me values that are inside the database, um, which also is a JSON return. That's what I'm testing. I don't care what the HTML looks like. I just care about what. Does the search service on the server actually return what I want in this controller, which is the practice patients whiteboard controller? OK, do we test anything uh, through the UI like we are loading the UI? It automatically loads uh, details on the uh, text boxes and then goes ahead and test it. No. Is there anything on that? OK, there is nothing in terms of the smoke tests. Now we do have um image differential test that is calling selenium 
uh, image differential test, uh, if I wanted to walk you through it real fast. Um, it basically does a UI regression test of the entire site. It takes screenshots using Selenium. This is mm -hmm. me trying to make it as a proof of concept. So obviously things are hard coded. Don't do that. <laughs> um, and it takes first a screenshot of your base uh, images of the entire page. So there's like 94 different pages. It just takes a screenshot using Selenium. Selenium just says navigate to load page screenshot, navigate to load page screenshot. Then it goes to a comparison uh, environment. So this one is Goose. Maybe I'm looking at Hollywood where they push some sort of changes. Mm -hmm. And when that's done, it takes all those screenshots called the active screenshots. And then it mm -hmm. compares the two and looks for errors, any sort of pixel differences and highlights pixel differences. But this was more for UI regression because we're refactoring. We're not refactoring. We are um, updating the UI. We're having a refresh of it. So what we're actually, I built a test harness for this test. Um, I, it's not inside the framework, but uh, it's this guy. This is kind of like um, practice. Uh, this is kind of like a proof of concept part two. <laughs> but I needed other people to use it that are QAs. Um, but if you look, it's pretty much the same exact code. Uh, there's nothing different about it in terms of uh, functionality. So I created this little form. I'm, I'm actually testing Hollywood versus Hollywood because the, our problems that we were having was um, they'll change the header and then all of a sudden a text box would shrink somewhere else completely in the inside the application. So what this tool does is it highlights the differences. And if I look, I give you like the, the uh, result. So my active images are located here. Um, my baseline images are located here. And then differences that can be detected are loaded here. Anything that's highlighted in red uh, shows me what's different. Um, and I didn't create the library to do this. It uses a library called Image Magic that just compares the differences between one and two. A good example that we caught yesterday was um, it's bigger. this guy here. So they made a change to where the date field was getting cut off. So the developer fixed it. And then in response, when he did that, he broke um, another field. This one. And it shrunk this field. Um, this is actually him fixing it. This is the delta when we actually detected it. So that's uh, his fix to expand the date field. And then he actually broke it significantly here. So if I were to look at image 75 of my active images, we can see that he had fixed it. He shrunk that. But let's look at uh, baseline images from the time that was true. So this this mostly in terms of alignments and and the changes in the UI. <laughs> maybe maybe we may have, may have moved from the left to right side or maybe on top, something right. like that. Then just because we're uh, not yeah we're not they weren't making progress with refactoring the UI or, or refreshing the UI because they're they touch one thing and the CSS would break something else somewhere else. So I created this quick test that uses Selenium, um, and we needed to use it now, mid sprint. <laughs> So I had to create this on the fly, but the only example that I have of Selenium being used in any way is here. And it just looks at the UI, it compares all the images, and gives you the difference. Okay. Right now our focus is trying to uh, interact with the API as much as possible to cover functionality tests, to build out smoke tests from those functionality tests, incorporate into continuous integration. Um, and once that's finished, we were going to start to do UI testing uh, using Selenium. OK, and that will not be through the image uh, pixel differences, right? No, 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 that, that will not be through the image pixel differences. Um, the smoke test will eventually incorporate the pixel differences because there's a value there. Because sometimes when, when they did like the vet rocket, um, when we rolled that out, they forgot the vet rocket image icon for the configuration settings. The for whatever reason didn't actually copy over. So when the image differential test ran, 
it said, hey, I'm missing this icon. I am expecting it here and it's not here. So stuff like that we can catch or CSS file changes that don't uh, merge correctly in the build process will also be detected right off the bat. But that's all we have in terms of UI and what we're going to include incorporate in our smoke tests. OK, and we are using VS test for this, right? For all this integration testing. Um, yes, right now MS test is the um, test harness between Visual Studio and Azure DevOps and the um, test explorer here. OK. OK, Thanks, Justin. of course. So back to our our call, so I want to create a model. This one's actually kind of easy, which is nice, but that's why I did it ahead of time. <laughs> uh, there's a little JSON to C sharp application uh, web based. It's really cool. You paste your JSON uh, call. You can hit generate and it creates your classes. To set your variables or your object properties uh, It's pretty awesome. Uh, this one was easy, so it wasn't very long, <laughs> uh, but sometimes some of these JSON um, queries are quite extensive and they have nested ones where there's a list inside of another list inside of you know this and there's properties and objects or properties and then values inside those lists and it's a real pain. That website's really great uh, because I can copy and paste in um, a model relatively quickly. Practice have my model whiteboard. Yay. So I'm actually doing a search, so I'll rename this to search. Options and then the action that I'm doing, I'm posting. Um, I'll rename it here. Perfect. I make sure everything is capitalized because they are going to do coding standards. We'll be doing code reviews every time you guys check in a test. Um, Brendan has requested that. Uh, we follow the coding standards, so when you do a pull request, when you check in your tests, we will be looking for, you know, capitalization. Um, is your class name something appropriate to where if I don't know what this model's for, does it kind of sort of make sense? Um, I, in fact, I don't even like search options. That's not a good name for what I'm doing. I'm just searching for patient. So search. I'd probably call this whiteboard. Well, whiteboard's in the model, so search patient, and then I'm posting. So that's what I probably a better way. This way, other people can know exactly what it's for. If I could spell right, there we go. So once that's set up, I can start working on my controller. Um, don't have a controller? We'll go ahead and add that. In the controller, basically, we're going to use our model that we just created and parse some and send it some JSON. Uh, so we know that we're going to be using system.net for that. Uh, I think that's about it. Yeah, just system.net. Collections, well, we're going to return our list, so we're going to need the collections in there. Uh, public so that we can see it from our smoke test. Uh, we've got to change one last thing I forgot. Because it's inside of a folder structure, it likes to be annoying. Eh, that's not what I wanted. Yeah. I like to shorten this up. It's just easier to call when you're working with it. It's my personal preference. I don't care if you guys do that or not. <laughs> it's just my personal preference when I'm trying to actually code. So this one will be let's see, models and. This is also wrong. I hate that. Thank you. Oh, da, da, da. We have our whiteboard model. Yep, right here and then search patient post, but we don't want to, eh, we're not going to return this. 
we're just posting, right? So we'll just skip that part. We are going to call this. Uh, search patient no actually we are going to return it remember yeah we are returning we are returning json and we don't have a model for that so let's do that really fast Take this paste generate ah oh, that's so much better Go back to my whiteboard model. Add this. So search patient return. Looks pretty good to me. No. Why did I do that? I have no idea. Search patient return. This will be uh, what is it doing? Oh, status, true. And I have a list called items. So we'll call this my search patient return root object. And this is what I'll actually call when, yeah, that works for me. This is what I'll actually call when I want to return this whole list. So the way, I mean, it's kind of hard to explain. So I'm calling the root node first, uh, and because I want to bring, I want to return like a list or maybe a dictionary, but in this case, we'll just return a list. So the first item that I, I'm going to return is the root of the JSON. Uh, so th in this class in particular, I'll call this. Um, and then I'll get these values and I can iterate over them in my um, testing and um, grab the values that way. And I'll explain that as we move forward. So this looks good. That looks good. Eh, change that. Nope. OK. Cool. Back to this. So so that's what we're going to return. Sorry if I'm confusing you. <laughs> uh, models. Da, 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 da. Whiteboard and search patient return object. And this will be called let's see, I'm gonna need the domain that we're working with. Um getting my cookies. I think that's all we're gonna need. Right? Because I'm not yep, I don't need to send anything else. So that's nice. That's an easy return. Um, what I like to do is, oh yeah, we're going to need logging. We'll use Siri log for this. Um, I, that's set up in your test for you. Siri log is here. Set up. Uh, this is the logger. Uh, right now it's writing to console, but we can write it to file. This is going to change probably next week when DevOps tells me um, this is what we need to have. This is how we have to set up Siri log to actually return stuff to Azure. Right now we don't have that. So I'm just setting it to the console so I can see kind of like what it's doing. But that again, that's real simple to do. You don't have to worry about it too much. Um, we just don't know what it's going to look like or how it's going to configure. DevOps is trying to figure that out. So. And so I can call log here and I just information um, starting I, this is how I like to do it I'm starting I'm inside the um, whiteboard and I'll be what am I doing search for patient oh that's what we're gonna need we're gonna need a search term actual you know what are we actually searching right so string call it search term search for a patient if we wanted to we could just parse it right here so that we can see it in our log what we're actually searching for. <clears throat> oh, 
our search term is actually doing JSON, right? Under term. Okay, so we got to call our model again. We're actually posting. Uh, just for poops and giggles, I'll just call it my search. I know it's not really the greatest naming convention. Search page is posted. Oh no, that's not right because it is under the options. So there's a node there. So I actually have to call this, which is not a great. See, that's not a good one. Search patient root post root. So that's what I'm going to call instead. Uh, let's see. Then we got to set up our request. Web request. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. Then pass in our domain. And what is our whole string? What are we looking for? Practice patient search. <laughs> We're accepting JSON. No content type, not worry about the cookies because we already set those, but let's go ahead and put it here, cookie container equals my cookies. Oh. And that was all my authorization stuff. There's no content type, is there? Yeah, there's content. And is this a post or a git? It's kind of important that it's a post. So. No, we don't want to do that. So, because, oh, well, that's going to be fun. <laughs> All right, so instead, let's do it this way. Um, our root object is models, whiteboard, search, patient, return, post, da, 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 da. Then that way we have what we have root, uh, we have options that show up, right? Should show up. Why is this not liking me? Oh, I'm dumb. So yeah, there's my options. We don't actually set our options in this, do we? No, there's nothing there. It's just client ID, blah, 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 blah. So actually, I don't need to set that. So how I would do this, I'd probably say mm, options new list models whiteboard model. that one, right? And <clears throat> take a look. What 
what we got. Options. Term. Do I need to pass anything else? False. True. Term. Client ID is not important. Where did it go? Term is what? Search term? Yeah. Now we might have to hard code some variable, variables here. Sorry, I was just thinking. I wasn't talking while I was typing. I apologize. So in order to make the web service happy, generally we have to send everything as it shows here. Even if we're not setting a client ID, it might be necessary to say client ID equals zero. But again, that it depends upon how much we know about the application, how it's going to perform. So I guess we can set those here. Client ID equals zero. But you know, I hate to do hard coded variables. Why am I putting those there? Um, search term, what else we have? Include patients only. True, or is it a boolean value, or is it a string? Who knows? Ah, it's bool. Okay. What else do we have? Uh, Assuming that's true. Oh, it's false. Now, uh, let's see, that's done. Did I put my semicolon in the wrong spot? No, it doesn't like how I'm converting my models. Can I closely convert my collection? It should like that. Posting search items post one quick second. Any questions why I troubleshoot my own bad code? <laughs> uh, I guess we need to give options equal to there uh, before new. Is it because it didn't look like we have anything set there? Where's the, our options is the actual list, right? Uh, options equal to this. Okay. Uh, okay. Heads of list, turns of list, then I instantate my class. So, so this new variable to which variable we are going to assign this value, new model, such in such patient post. You're not assigning it to any variable, right? I mean, any property. It shouldn't need a property. <clears throat> Uh, option is a what data type Justin? It should be uh, defined right uh, list uh, list options like that. List, list options. Yeah, list yeah. Op options yeah. Equal to, yeah. Where you can use otherwise. Uh, just before the options only list options is equal to new list model like that. But is it a list? I don't think it's a list. Uh, we have uh, uh, many uh, like kind of draw op options under the list, right? So uh, that's not going to work. No, no, a list of space option. We have, there are no braces for the option. Oh, OK, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, it's still not going to like that. List options. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. It should be happy. Uh, make it make it where otherwise the list. Sorry, uh, what's that? Make it where so it will take automatically the type. Before options, you can uh, define it as where we are. Yeah, do that. Okay. Again, I guess yeah. So 
a lot of times I could be putting this in the wrong spot and don't like it. Well, when in doubt. How's it going? Okay, so it's the same point. All right. I comment stuff out and like, well, maybe the error changed. Uh, Evet models, it's, uh, it's a list. It is a list. It shouldn't matter that it's generic. This is new. Equals new list. Yeah, got that. Yep, that's good. Let's see. Brackets, good. Then I create my, call my class, give it its terms, comma, comma. Yep. yep. Oh, you know what? I bet you anything. If I no, because I don't need to create another model. Eh. Interesting. Okay. Can you go back to model once? Uh, let's see what, like, uh, what all we have there. Yeah. One oh. minute. So root object is having. It's not a list. Oh, it's a search it's equation it's post. Flat. One. It is having patient written items. So this is. So. Uh, so we are creating uh, the object of such patient post root. Yeah, post roots are first one. Post root. Okay. Here. Okay. So okay, go back to model ones, please. I can get rid of this. Uh, okay, so it has a uh, such patient post uh, object. Search patient post here. We okay. call it here. Yep. Okay. Can you go back again? Options. So it's mm. actually seeing it. Search patient okay. post. OK, so. Uh, OK, why again uh, search patient post inside that? New model search patient post. We should have directly declared uh, the properties. Yeah. Uh, line number 21. Yep. Is it a list? It's not the list, I guess. Uh, can you go yeah, back? It's not a list. I thought it was a list. New patient. It's not a list. Yeah. I can directly this. give the properties here. Yeah. yeah, I can get rid of all this. Haha! -ha! See, we worked together. <laughs> point out my problem. It was not a list the whole time. <laughs> all right, cool, awesome. Thank you. Uh, what was I doing? Uh, right, so we set up terms. Pass the search term. Da, 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 da. Now I guess we can serialize our JSON. Um, oh, fantastic. And it'll be my inside my request. Get request stream. Do it this way. My JSON that I'm going to send to it later. So let me set this. We don't have JSON converter. Newton soft. So we use the Newton soft. I think it's convert. Yeah, that's it. And we're going to be doing root. Yep, because we want to do the whole thing. Awesome. Um, then stream. Writer again, and actually write the thing. Uh, then we got to get a response. 
response, then Marshall request. Uh, we have to read it as a string because we have to deserialize it inside of JSON convert, right? So I'm not, why did I do that? So I'll, let's see. So now this is, we got to call our return model, the search patient return root object. Well, actually, we can just run it and see how we're doing. No, because we want to return that. So let's actually return it. So models. Whiteboard. Let's add my results. I think I did this right. Thinking. Thinking I did. If this works the first time, then I need a pay raise. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see. So, search patient. Yep. Smoke test. Oh, we'll just use this one. This one's empty, right? Fantastic. Uh, whiteboard. Just for poops and giggles. And I'm going to do. Oh, I probably need to. Did I make it static? I don't think I made it static, did I? Brendan would be very upset if I made it static. No, I didn't. this way. I'll do it this way. Mac board, controller. Uh, we'll just call it first run because we typed it out. Let's see if it actually works. That'd be nice if it does. Search patient. I need what? A domain. Auth cookie, which we already set, and then my search term. Obviously, we wouldn't hard code it like this, but whatever. Just an example. We're looking for Charlie. Uh, Charlie, get rid of this. My search 
return equals again. Awful. So, who thinks it's going to work? <laughs> should we debug it or should we just run it and see what it calls? Let's see. Let's just run it. Yeah. Run. So it did it. It didn't give me a 500 error. Of course, it didn't return anything. Oh, we were searching for Char, weren't we? We weren't searching for Charlie. That might not be the animal's the animal's name. Let's try that again. <clears throat> Ooh, so it's not happy about something. That's fantastic. But it doesn't return an error. Let's see if. Goose sent me an error and an exception log. Nope, that's not us. That was at 4.53 a.m. Hmm. Options. We might need to be inside the practice. This could be the instance where, um, so it, like I was saying, um, it won't always return an error, even though it's correct. It doesn't return an error. Why we do this select this. And it could be because we don't have the right cookies. So one of the ways I do that without just going into it. Um, we know that's what it's doing. Fantastic. And I just do it manually like this. So let's do this again. Char. And I do a comparison. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Maybe we need the referral. Refer possibly. Um, let's see, what cookies does it have? What do we have? Okay, so we are, yeah, it looks like we've got the verification token, but this one has the ESET value that I don't have set in. So I bet you we need to select our practice. There's an ASP session ID and our user. And then what we actually sent it was just that ESET value, but we don't have the log login. So in this case, we're going to, Select we, our patient. We have a request token over there, I guess. Uh, just if we can navigate back. OK. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll call our um, select practice, which is a private method right here in my test. I already showed you guys all that, so we should have, I think we're on practice ID 60, so just for poops and giggles. Run that again. Let's see if we get a better response. Redirect to practice. And that's what the reason was. So once again, so we were able to call the API, um, identify, troubleshoot. You guys helped me with the coding thing, so trying to create a list when there wasn't a list. <laughs> um, and then we sent the API request. It said everything was hunky dory. It wasn't hunky dory. It says my status is true and my results 200, but I didn't return any items, even though we know those items are there. Um, and now we've isolated the fact that my cookies weren't the same. So the, once I set up my cookies, um, I set the. Uh, oh, I updated the request verification. Needed a different request verification. Uh, then we were able to return a result and get what I need back, which is Charlie's information and data, which gives us an interesting question. How do we know that the API test is actually working? How can we assert that it's true? I can't just say, hey, is that is true? And then say assert uh, is, you know, do like an assert is true and then look for this value uh, because that doesn't tell me anything, right? It, the only way um, I'd be able to identify it is if perhaps um, these objects are here, right? I'm looking for is the client first name get set uh, it did. Makes sense. Okay. Any questions so far? Then we need to go ahead and check our UI uh, or in database. Uh, is the returned uh, information is correct or how is it? Right, we could. We could call Selenium and, and see that way. Um, 
we could be looking for patient name. It actually is not null. Does it actually come up with anything? Um, stuff like that. Uh, Justin, uh, is it possible for uh, uh, you to add uh, uh, variables, whatever the output returning from this variable, we can store in one string and uh, what are the patient uh, we were searching for that if it's already existing, that string also we can store in one another variable, then we can compare two uh, variables, right? If both both are having same value, then uh, uh, we can say API is you know working fine, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we could do something like that. Yeah, for example, if we have a Charlie in the database, we can save the Charlie in one variable and whatever the, we are searching uh, that uh, hard code value which we are passing, that also we can store in one another variable, then we can compare two variables. Then if output output of the both the variables are same, then uh, we can say it is passed, something there like you that. Go. Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah, because this test is, oh, it's thundering at my house. Interesting, never rains in Arizona, I'm sorry. It's very dry in Arizona, so now it's raining. Sorry, um, that's a good idea. Because this is just a smoke test, we're not trying to break it, right? So we just need to validate that it can reach into the database, return our results. I think that's totally legitimate. Yeah. I don't have access to the database, but yes, it's a good idea. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, I just, you guys... uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Justin. Yeah, I just wanted to know, like, uh, uh, why are we using cookies over here? Because uh, sometimes what happened uh, if application is, you know, we are not able to launching the application, then uh, probably we'll be deleting the cache and cookies and all, right? So what is the use of cookies uh, here? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the application itself uses the cookies. I can't make API calls without uh, um, setting up the cookies properly. As you saw, it failed because I didn't even have all the cookies. Once mm -hmm. I told it to redirect to the practice, um, it, it added, uh, it updated the cookies uh, perspective to that particular practice. If I changed it from practice ID 60 to 73, I bet we'd see the different cookies altogether. And I think the way the API works inside of EVET, it's looking for um, different ver uh, tokens before you can actually do anything. For instance, I'll give you an example in clients. Uh, if I want to add a new client, I click this right here. It's yeah. actually it's it's actually resetting the cookies again based upon a whole new uh, request verification. So let's see. Du, 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 du. Yeah. Yes. When I want to go to create something. It wants to reset. It wants to send another request verification token right here, mm -hmm. which is nothing. It just it's not even. It, it, if I look at my my. Um, cookie here. There's a request verification token uh, in here somewhere, which is completely different. So every time you want to call to create something, it actually sends you another verification token that you actually have to send. So yes. if, I were, if I were to create something real fast, you'd see it. Blah, blah, save. Uh oh, create anyways, that's fine. If we hit create right here, this value three, five, and blah, 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 is going to be in here, right there. See, request verification token. Yeah. And so we have to capture all this stuff. And I don't know how the tokens are generated, but I know it's very specific to the cookies that we have mm -hmm. in here. Okay. Uh, Justin, I just have a couple of questions. One, uh, what kind of framework is this? Uh, like we have a hybrid framework, data driven framework, right? So what kind of framework is this? Not really a framework, it's just Visual Studio HTTP web requests, right? Uh, we use Siri log for logging, and we're going to use Azure DevOps to kick off the uh, tests. Uh, there's not really a framework. We do have MS test um, that we're using as our harness in between. Uh, okay. So that's where we get our test methods from and in our test initialize. Uh, but that's really the only framework that we have. Oh, uh, we do have test categories. Uh, this is for Azure DevOps to identify what the tests are. Uh, those constants are here. Okay. All our test categories. So, but it's not really so much as a framework. It's kind of lean. Uh, we're not using anything in particular, um, just outside of those three components. Okay. And will you only uh, checking for the API rights in this one? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, that's all this thing. Uh, just in this Vishwa. Uh, I just Hi. Uh, once uh, can you recap like models and controllers just uh, navigate. So this controls this and once this is so like that. Right. So when we're doing JSON, uh, we set our models up for any of the objects and the values that we want to send over. Um, and I got all these value values by looking at the JSON um, that we send and receive. Okay. Right here. And I copied um, the entire JSON and I posted it in here, this little tool, so we don't have to type all that out. Uh, JSON to C sharp dot com. Okay. Copied, replaced it, put it in our model, which is here, uh, renamed it so it was kind of helpful. Um, in terms of our controller, this is where we make the actual HTTP web requests. Um, okay. And we call our model. In this case, I'm returning the search patient return root object. Uh, and then I set my variables or variables that it detects in my class that's inside the whiteboard model here. Okay. Um, rate my web request, identify that it's application JSON. It is a post, make sure it's a post or a get. You got to make sure I serialize the object. Uh, JSON convert is Newton soft JSON is what actually uh, serialize it to be uh, in a manner that is expected, right? Rather than because I think I think you can do like a um, you can do it like this and, and then the options and then I can do something like this and I can hard code it and mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that. Let's let JSON deal with it. Uh, JSON convert. Uh, I write. Um, I write this to my JSON variable, which is a string okay. using the stream writer. So I had write that. Then I said the response, my request, get my response into my res eh, my request into my response using the stream reader, turn a stream, uh, my result read the entire stream to the end. And then I want you to deserialize the object based upon my model mm -hmm. here. OK. And then that and I return it there, which is returning the same thing here. Models, whiteboard, model, search patient, return root object. Sure. OK. When I call it in my smoke test, I put it in a variable. Um, that way I can just I can pull up all the information from it. So I think it's items is one of them. Yeah, items. So it gets returned. Yeah, items. And it pulls that from the model here. I did record this. Uh, I will save it and send it to you guys as well. Yeah, sure. Just that will be. Oh, so we didn't do any. We did the logging. So I said whiteboard search for patient jar. I could have put more logging into it. I didn't. Um, probably should have done that. Uh, we didn't do any try catches. When you do try catches uh, in a test, uh, it'll catch the error and keep going, but it won't show it as an error here. So that's where we do our asserts. Okay. A heads up, a tip. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we covered authorization, cover how to write a basic test where I do a search. Um, oh, new get packages. So if those of you who are in diagnostic platform, there's a couple of NuGet packages that we have. I'll show you those right here. So the HTML agility pack, that's what we use to get the uh, request verification tokens. Anytime we have to grab those, um, you don't have to worry about magic. Again, that's image differential tool. That's what compares one image to another and highlights differences. The really cool part about that is we don't need to look at every single image. You can actually just say, hey, if threshold of pixel differences is greater than 3%, send me an email. And what page is it? So we can do all kinds of cool stuff with that, uh, but it's good for quick regression testing for the UI. Uh, so here, uh, yes. uh, sorry to interrupt. So here, uh, errors are mapped to mail ID, right? So we do get the information of the errors. Right, yeah. That is um, zero logs. Um, 
And then when it throws an exception, does the Azure get the errors? Was that your question? Yeah, that's what yes, it, it should get the errors, right? Um, but when the test is kind of running and you're looking at a test that maybe runs for five minutes and mm -hmm. you're like, it just throws an exception and you're like, well, where was this at? You know, uh, it would be helpful to be able to step through each step of like, hey, OK, so I'm doing a search term. I'm calling this controller. Uh, this is the result I get. And then I went to set my cookies and it exploded. That's a lot easier than just saying, boom, error 500, stack trace, uh, could not parse JSON string, blah, 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 blah. Um, I think it'd be a lot easier so that they understand what step. That's why I kind of created in the beginning. It's like, hey, right now I'm running a search for this item here. I think that it's more helpful. Right, it will throw those exceptions in Azure, um, but it's not visible from this page, right? It'll just run. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so Siri logs, because we use .NET Core, your projects will also be .NET Core. Um, it's not the full framework, right? So you need to bring over whatever um, libraries you need to do your tests. Mm -hmm. And in this project, I've used all of these in some form or another. That's why they're installed. <clears throat> okay. uh, your MS test adapter, because we're using Microsoft Test, is really going to be looking for this. Uh, let's see, what else would you need? That's about it. You don't need to worry about anything else. HTML agility pack, Siri log, Newton soft, uh, and MS test adapter and test framework. Uh, I can't think of anything else to share. That rocket is a functional functional test that looks a little bit different. Um, in this case, if you want to look at it, this is where I'm actually using some asserts. Uh, if you want to go through the code here, it's a good template. Um, I'm adding on to it today because they got the, obviously the image study in. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, and then I also do cleanup. Part of the problem with uh, what we're doing, so like the smoke test, there I could call, you know, you can, MS test lets us do uh, test cleanup, but you're going to be inserting so much data and so much information into the database to delete it all. The, the, the test cleanup method is going to be just as long as the actual smoke test itself, right? Uh, in the vet rocket, what I decided to do was at the end, I created a procedure, delete the procedure at the end. So I still don't have a good way of cleaning up the environment when the test is completed just yet. I'm open to your guys' ideas. Um, right now, I'm just like, you know what? Uh, if I create something, I'll just delete it at the end. I wanted to do something like before a test runs, create a practice and set up the practice and do all that. That way, whatever you do inside the environment, at the end, you can just say delete practice and the issue is resolved. Um, but that was just my approach. I don't know yet. Yeah, uh, but uh, going forward, if we need uh, any of the practices, like uh, if the practice is having, uh, sorry, the client is having the wellness plan on and all, so we need to check it after uh, one day or so. So I yeah. guess at that close, yeah. That's, yeah. that's not going to work. <laughs> if I delete the practice, I need it. Yeah. 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 It's a hard, it's a, it's it's tough. I don't know. I don't know what we'll do. Maybe we'll create a practice that has just a bunch of data in it that other people won't go into. It'll just be QA's practice. Maybe we yeah. could do something like that and we don't have to clean up the environment so much. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that would help. Okay. Um, so I guess. Uh, so um, how will be getting the updated codes or uh, how is it like? OK, good question. Um, you guys have already copied the repo down, am I yeah. correct? Yeah, uh, we have copied okay. it. So what we're doing is we're doing pull requests. So I changed some code, right? So I, if I go over to changes, mm -hmm. We have a bunch. Uh, there's a process of doing all this. Uh, I should have actually been in a different branch rather than prep for DevOps. Um, so when you guys go to do changes uh, and you're working on something, create a new branch based upon uh, the test case you're, you're working on. I don't have a test case for time card or whiteboard or anything, but let's say I did. Put it under feature. Uh, that creates a folder structure in Azure so we can find things. And then I'd, I'd call it um, the test case number. In this case, I'm making it up. Um, whiteboard, 
keep it lowercase. Uh, whiteboard. Uh, functionality. Uh, I'd create the branch. Okay. So this code's on this branch, and then um, I'd submit my changes. Commit, save, I'd sync it. Okay. Looks good, I'll push it. Um, and then it'll pop up with a create a pull request. Okay. Click that, uh, assign a reviewer to it, or just leave it empty. Uh, I use Jonathan, but uh, you guys can use me, each other. Um, yeah. And then the work item, if you have it listed, there's no whiteboard. I don't know what was, uh, functionality. I, I won't even assign one because I don't have anything for it. Uh, hit create. Goes. Make sure it's in the develop. And then when you're done, um, copy it to the clipboard, post it in our team general. Yeah. I do it just like this. That way, when Caleb comes into work this morning, you know he can. He can click right on the pull request. He can go through the changes. Uh, make sure I'm doing naming conventions properly. Uh, sure. Uh, oh, I made some other changes. So, right. Yeah, and then he would say approve. I can't approve my own work. And then once that's approved, it'll go. It'll merge. It'll complete the pull request. And then generally at the end of the week, I merge. Um, uh, the various branches that we have. Let's see what we have. Uh, branches. Yeah, so there's a couple of them that are are new. So that one, the one we just did. Where's that at? Whiteboard functionality, right? And then I merge it into the actual develop branch. So, so that's that's the process. Um, generally, like Thursday or Fridays, I'll start taking these branches and I'll merge them into the into develop. And then anybody who downloads the develop would obviously have the latest and greatest. Okay. Yeah, just uh, we'll uh, work on this and uh, we'll try to create some test cases or we'll just try out that. Perfect. Yeah, if you guys have ideas, don't be afraid to shoot them. Like I said, this is a new yeah. new way of doing things for a Covetris. Um, we want to stay with API as much as possible. You guys brought up good points. You know, we can launch the UI and make sure if I create a client, the client's still there. Double mm -hmm. checks. You know, the smoke test, my requirements for smoke tests were no UI whatsoever because of DevOps's need not to have. Uh, the UI spin up with Selenium. They want to be able to finish a build relatively quickly. Um, so they were concerned about that, plus the fragility of, you know, clicking buttons through the UI and having to maintain that just so that builds would successfully build and the framework wouldn't fail out because she is putting a condition that if the smoke tests fail, you don't get a build. If smoke tests fail, you don't get the deployment to the environment. So that's why she wanted APIs. The API that we did should never change. I, I mean, they might they might add something that it's looking for every once in a great while, but the JSONs should remain the same, generally speaking. Sure. And for all we know, I mean, we I, I let, let's try to break it, right? So if I go into my practice and I go to my controller, and, I don't know, let's not provide, I don't know what this does, right? I conclude an active, nah, I don't need that. Nah, I don't need that either. And we just run it. Does it work? I don't know. Let's try. Maybe I get a 500. Nope, it says everything's hunky dory. Oh, it returned a bunch of more information. <laughs> I guess uh, it's filtering up. Yeah, it's the filtering. What if I change it to client ID two or yeah, three? What's that do? You know, I don't know. So you don't obviously you don't need to set every variable there, which is fine. So, oh, now I only got two back. So I don't know how that works. But yeah. It, it shouldn't throw an error. It, the functionality is actually still worked, right? 
Yeah. So it's it's not as fragile as you know. Hey, my X path has changed, and I can't find the text box. So that's kind of why we took that approach. Uh, okay. But uh, you guys have test cases and everything, right? Uh, for this, you guys will be in the sprint planning. Yeah, but right now, like we are not uh, writing the automation test cases for the current sprints. So, right. Yeah, that's the thing. Like we need to move it from the first. Sure. Yeah. And uh, one thing, just in like uh, others don't have the uh, so, uh, some of the other persons are not having uh, access to this repo. Like uh, yeah, give me a list. Uh, Brendan's not gonna be back till Monday, but I can hit up Joshua. Okay. And get everybody added, I think, because that way you guys get it now rather than wait until next week. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Give me the list of everybody who doesn't have access, and I'll get you guys access today. Sure. sure. I'll just post it on the Teams. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's interesting. Hi. Thanks, Justin. Have a good one. Hey, you too, guys. Thanks for hanging out there tonight. Hi. It was very nice, actually, informative. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Justin. Have a good one. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye.